This week, our hero will try to bust on some big buffalo bass. Without further ado, here he is, the world's greatest angler. I can't say this. Just read the script. And Canada's fishing funny man, Dave Mercer. Here we are, we're in Buffalo. Home to Commander Tom and the Bills and the Sabres. All sorts of amazing things. Never mind the giant, giant smallmouth bass of Lake Erie. But before we go fishing, let's indulge on a great buffalo tradition. The buffalo chicken wing. Mm. Oh, all right. Now let's go fishing. Man, oh man, for a year. You know what, this is one of the most important parts of a fishing trip, and a lot of people take it for granted. One of the first things I'll do when I hit a body of water, doesn't matter whether it's a lake like this that I've been on a lot, or a brand new lake, is I'll drive that lake. I wanna find out where those fish are, key in on what area of the lake they're on, what depth, what the water temperature is. Pay attention to the little things, because throughout the day it'll really help you. I mean, let's face it, if you find fish on a point, if you know where all the points are on the lake, you can go back and bing, 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 hit them off. So drive the lake. Don't just get out there and get hyper and want to get casting. Find the fish and then get catching. Oh, what's wrong with me today? Didn't eat my Wheaties. There he is. I got him this time. Oh, feels heavy. He ain't heavy. Come here, dude. <laughs> right there is why you go to Lake Erie, baby. Look at the size of that mule. And I got a little secret thing I'm doing here. And it's the reason that he's eating that tube, and I'll show it to you in a minute. What an awesome, awesome fish. One of the biggest keys when you're doing this style of fishing, I mean, whether you're dragging or trolling, no matter what you're doing, is pay attention to your speed. I'm always glancing down at the hummingbird, paying attention. I mean, we don't have too, too much wind out here yet. Shh, don't tell anyone. You never say there's not too much wind when you're fishing the Great Lakes. But we don't have too, too much wind out here yet, so I'm not using a drift sock or anything like that. But if we get a bunch of wind, I'm... Hold on. Oh, I missed a fish. Are you kidding me? But if we get a bunch of wind, I'll drop that drift sock and try to slow down the boat a little bit. He came back. <laughs> I knew he would. I knew he would. I have a secret weapon. I'm just not using a normal tube jig out here today. <laughs> Stay in the water. Come here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another nice fish and that's why you come out to these great lakes and you know what like I said some people think dragging a tube is boring well you know what you go out and do whatever you want to do I'll tell you what you catch fish like this I'll drag a tube every single day of the week oh there he goes <laughs> all right I've been telling you about my little secret and just checking Make sure none of those other fishing show hosts are watching. Here it is right here. Why are all these fish coming back? I'm using scent. A lot of anglers, they go out fishing and they don't use scent. And I'll tell you right now, scent, it makes sense. And the reason, especially when you're dragging like this, especially when you're fishing a tube jig and you're dragging the Great Lakes, or, or for those of you who troll and do all sorts of different types of things, any bait that you're fishing, I mean, real fast moving baits, I don't use a lot of scent on them. But when I'm using slow moving baits like this, the fish has a long time to look at it. I will always, always, always spray it with a little bit of gulp and they will eat it up every single time. Here we go. Come on in here, you itsy bitsy teeny weeny. Who let the small fish out? Who? You my little cute little friend. Get back in there and grow bigger. We don't need no stinking small ones. We need the big ones, my friend. First you catch the big fish, then you get the power. All right, big fish. Oh, really messing with it today. Really, really, really. I tell you, one of the keys to this type of fishing is always, always, always pay attention. Pay attention to little things. I mean, we're fishing rock piles here, but it's really simple to drift off those rock piles and get onto the sand. Once you stop feeling those rocks go dunk, 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 you're probably in an area. I mean, you may catch a few fish from the sand, but he's got, oh, oh I got to stop talking to you and start paying attention to them. But really, really key is to pay attention to those little subtle differences. Once you get off the rock, get back on it. Don't be spending a lot of time in the sand. I mean, you're just dredging up the bottom then, you're probably not gonna catch a ton of fish. There he is, he's back now though. He hit, I missed. 
he hit, I missed. But then he came back, and that's the advantage of using scented baits. Oh, he got off. Swim away. Flee, my friend, flee. Hey, I tell you, one of the biggest keys with this style of fishing is to stay on top of the fish. And what I mean by that is rather than, you know, using my Minn Kota and beating back through the waves, I'll always get back to my boat once I finish the drift. Once I finish that rock line, start up the boat again, big motor it, and drift it. Let the wind be your friend. Don't be out there beating through those waves when you can just glide on around. There's this Oh, it's another good one. <laughs> Come here, dude. Oh, I lost him. Are you kidding me? I'm only joking. Oh, it's a nice one right there. Oh, when you start your drift, always, always, always make sure that you start your drift before the rocks. I mean, if you're going right to your icon on top of those rocks. By the time you get your cast out there, you're going to be past where the fish live. Start before the rocks, and this is what you get right here. <laughs> 